this is a plastic spoon. And this plastic spoon doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that in this modern world we all live in, we've got to the point where the effort required to explore for oil, drill in the deepest depths of oceans, extract oil from the earth, ship it to a refinery, process it into plastic, mould it into a spoon, package it, truck it to a store, buy it, bring it home, use it, then throw it out, truck it to a tip, and let it take years to break down, is somehow considered to be more convenient than simply washing the spoon we already have when we're done with it. <laughs> now that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Unfortunately, the plastic spoon isn't the only thing that doesn't make sense in today's world and our relationship with the planet we all live on. Think beyond the plastic spoon for a moment and consider daily decisions that you, we all make, that when we think them through, don't actually make sense. Our lives are ever more characterised by decisions we make through our everyday actions that are borne out by convenience rather than logical sense. Our decisions from managerial to personal purchasing decisions often bear little thought or consideration to the actual impact each decision will make on the global environment. Often, however, the consequences of our decisions are harder to envisage or comprehend than the plastic spoon example, because we are so disconnected from the consequences of seemingly routine choices. I'd like to share with you one such example, where the choices made don't make sense, but the impacts are harder to see than the plastic spoon. It relates to, potentially, your own superannuation or investment choices, and logging in the northeast region of the state of Victoria here in Australia. Now, this is an area marketed as benefiting from fresh, clean alpine air. Stunning mountain views, beautiful alpine valleys, and an array of colours in autumn. Yet the reality of this area is often somewhat different. It is actually an area dominated in many parts by logging. And each autumn, when the local tourism authorities are attempting to attract people to the area's beautiful autumn colours, the logging company is setting fire to remnants of its logging operations, polluting the local alpine valleys with acrid smoke and impacting the health and respiratory function of local residents, tourists and wildlife alike while also contributing to runoff to the local rivers from which the area's water supplies are sourced. Worse still, the fires only burn very small sections within the total logged areas, meaning this patchwork of burning off serves little, if any, purpose in this setting. It doesn't take much analysis to see this practice doesn't make sense. But here's the catch. Chances are, that some of you are potentially part owners of this logging company. The logging company is owned by superannuation and investment funds based here in Australia, as well as Canada and the United States. Organisations meant to be investing in the welfare of current and future retirees, yet polluting the very towns and waterways of some of the people whose health they're meant to be securing. Now clearly, that doesn't make sense. So why? in a world that is a finite resource, with a population that largely recognises the need to reduce our carbon footprint and take better care of the planet, are we still doing things that don't make sense? Like buying single-use plastic spoons and investing in polluting enterprises. The answer lies in how disconnected we've become from the natural world and the true impacts of our routine decisions. As I travel around photographing the world we all live in, 
often camping in remote areas to capture sunrises over alpine peaks, or spending time by tropical, tranquil waterways, and photographing wilderness areas from the air, it's easy to see that the miracle of nature is right there in front of us all. Spend time in the outdoors watching the workings of the natural world and you can't help wondering how you fit into it. A moment's thought is enough to realise we're all dependent on the natural world for our very existence. From the air we breathe, food we eat, water we drink. By being out amongst nature, you see not only extraordinary places, but witness firsthand the scale of man's impact on the environment. Centuries old migrations interrupted or confused, introduced pests strangling native flora and fauna, unnecessary waste, pollution with little regard for where it will end up, wildlife that is powerless to stop habitat loss and disturbance. When in the midst of nature, it starts to become very easy to comprehend those things mankind does that don't make sense. But my own experiences in the outdoors are not new. For tens of thousands of years, the human race has been connected to nature by hunting, gathering, and growing our own food, by experiencing the extremities of weather and changing seasons. Since the dawn of time, mankind has looked to nature to provide our basic survival needs. Problem is, we don't really do that stuff anymore. Our world has become more and more virtual, more and more regulated. We now live our lives in 22 degrees of air-conditioned comfort, detached from the world, separated by glass and computer screens. We now look to nature as a place to take from without truly understanding the consequences of large-scale resource extraction and without understanding how much we depend on intact ecosystems. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying all modern things are bad. I love my smartphone as much as the next person. What I am suggesting is if we all got out there from time to time, got a blast of the real world, felt some fresh air on our faces, got some dirt between our toes, Listen to the sound of a mountain stream flowing, smelt new smells and tasted flavours not available from fast food outlets, we might all come to better appreciate what we have and where things come from. We might see firsthand the scale of industrialisation on the global landscape. But we can't just up and move the entire Western world to remote jungles in Papua New Guinea. So less drastically and instead we need to start reconnecting our thinking and our decision-making to the natural world. And in so doing, start asking the question, does this make sense? Step back to the logging and burning off example earlier. Does it make sense that we simply hand over our hard-earned money to some investment manager to generate the best return for our retirement with little, if any, consideration as to where they actually invest it? Imagine if the smoke from those fires was filling your own home or the inner city offices of your superannuation fund. It would be immediately clear that outdated practices of burning off and investing in polluting enterprises simply don't make sense. But that smoke isn't filling our homes or the offices of our superannuation managers. It's filling the lungs of someone we've never met. Why? because we don't recognise that the impacts of so many of our daily decisions are intrinsically linked to the rest of planet Earth. Yet, by reintroducing and reconnecting ourselves to nature and asking the question, does this make sense? We may all come to realise that convenient is not necessarily better and that conservation and sustainability issues affect everyone we might come to understand that it's our own individual choices that collectively are what drive the demand for ever larger resource projects, which in turn are destroying the remaining wilderness areas we have left on this planet. Imagine if the investment managers removed themselves from their glass-protected office blocks, reconnected to nature a little more, and started asking the question, 
does this make sense? Just maybe they would start to make investment decisions that actually benefit the health of their unit holders rather than filling their lungs with toxic smoke. So too, the cafe owners, where the investment managers enjoy their daily coffee, might start to ask whether it makes sense to be serving coffee with plastic spoons and cups, because they realised it was their own demand for plastic that is helping drive oil exploration in sensitive wilderness sanctuaries halfway around the world. Without doubt, mankind has a growing and unprecedented influence over planet Earth. Thus, as the human population continues to grow at extraordinary speed, ever greater challenges, demands and pressures are being placed on the natural world and its ability to sustain us. Without doubt, one of the defining challenges of our time is therefore figuring out how future generations will have the food, water and energy they need. We will only meet that challenge if we reconnect our thinking to the natural world and stop doing things that don't make sense. For the good of this living planet that we all share and call home, my challenge to you today is to go forward, reconnect with nature a little more and start asking the simple question, does this make sense? In your workplace, in your home, in your everyday activities, are you buying products and packaging you don't really need? Are you supporting companies, governments and practices that don't make sense? Imagine if you were a bit more connected to the natural world, would decisions you make now still make sense? Start this process, spread it to others, and you and I, we all will start to realise that much of what we are doing doesn't make sense for the planet. It's just convenient. Thank you very much.